It's that time of the week, friends, and you know what time it is? Well, fuck, I guess it's only me today. It's TLF, Tearless Friday, everybody. And today we're going to be looking at range DPS predictions in 9.2. Do I need to make a list of disclaimers? Listen, you need to understand that this is just speculative talk right now by looking at what tier set bonuses are, kind of how class are performing now, and kind of speculating how all of this will influence the specific specs coming 9.2. Another disclaimer is that some of these tier specs need to be addressed and have not. Some of these have already been addressed and some are not even properly testable on PTR, not to mention that the majority cannot even be simmed, although some can. So it's kind of hard, but we're going to have fun with it, right? We're gonna make a tier list <laughs> with predictions and then come back in about two or three months after the patch is released and look at it and see how much of a fool I was. And that's kind of the fun part. So, you know, bookmark this video so you can come back and just laugh in my face. <laughs> but you know what you shouldn't laugh in the face of? And that is the Warcraft Logs Companion app under the umbrella of Overwolf. They are sponsoring this video and this is an amazing app that you can get to help you log in game and do a lot of other stuff. This is different than the normal desktop application. This is the companion app, which lets you do pretty much everything that the application does and the website together in like one batch. You can essentially access this within the game menu and actually see the UI in your game. And you can use it to check people who are applying to your group in the LFG, check their parses, their experience, whatever bosses or dungeons they have done and how well they perform during all of that. You can also check your guild's progress and see exactly how well it's performing overall as well as your character as well. And you can do this upload or do live logs and check everything within the game as well. To get the application, basically go to the warcraftlogs.com website and you follow the instructions step by step as to how to download and incorporate this into your game. We also have a video on it, by the way. So thank you, Overwolf and Warcraft Logs Companion app for sponsoring this video. So let's get on with it. What's gonna happen with Affliction? Well, see, this is the thing, right? Affliction is doing really good right now, uh, mostly in uh, Mythic Plus right now. I think it's the second best Mythic Plus spec and is doing really good in raids as well, although a little bit behind Demonology. However, the tier set is looking to be really good, not to mention it synergizes really well with the current Covenant Knight Fey um, for giving, you know, those Malefic Rapture extension to your dots, which is incredible. Kalamazi actually made a video about it, which we recommend you check and seeing how actually the dots are extended and you barely have to refresh, which is amazing and you get to cast more Drain Souls, which is something good, something bad for certain people. I personally like that spec and I feel Affliction is going to surprise a lot of people in the next patch. Maybe not in the first couple of weeks, but I believe Affliction will be a tier. Very close to S tier. I'm, I'm hesitant to put it into S tier because we don't know all the balance of all the specs yet. And the bonuses that Affliction has are not that crazy to bump it up to S tier. And we're looking at Arcane Mage next. Now, Arcane Mage is tricky. The theory crafters have already looked at the spec and, uh, and the bonuses are great and especially in quality of life with extending, making the touch of the magic essentially window a little bit bigger and fixing a couple of the bugs and issues with Kyrian and it looks like Kyrian will probably still be the best for Arcane Mage. Arcane Mage is okay now, but it doesn't really stand out so it's kind of hard to place. I would normally like to pre place specs higher in, uh, in in like the overall rankings but I actually don't know how Affliction can rise above the rest and currently I believe it's going to be a C tier. We're gonna breeze through all of this with a couple of disclaimers as well seeing as we don't have Marcillion's input. Moving on, Beast Mastery. Beast Mastery has received uh, a big buff in terms of single target, especially with the tiers to the tier set. Single target might see it as potentially the best hunter spec, which I mean, it only contends with marksman when it comes to range and survival is melee and all of that. But it looks like it could be really, really good in raids. Although so far with the testing that has been done, unless I have misunderstood things, Beast Mastery doesn't really get a lot in AOE with, with the tier set. At least Cleave is not going to be really good for it in terms of rating, but it's so you you have pros and cons to the spec, so it kind of makes it 
around the same ranking as it is now when you, when you put it against all the other specs. So I believe Beastmaster is going to be C tier, but it could very well be B tier. It's going to be around arcane performance. It's going to be, let's say, average or maybe a little bit below average in, in raids and dungeons. But Beastmaster always has the potential to rise above everything else with how it scales with gear. And seeing as how the tier set might take away the value of crit a little bit, and seeing as how Night Fae is likely still the best covenant for BM with Kirin taking a big drop because crit just becomes devalued. Uh, I guess we'll have to see right now, but I would comfortably put it into C tier and I would not be surprised if it rise one or two tiers and I might actually think it could be A tier by the end. Now, since Marcelin isn't here to kill the dream, Boomkins, baby! Holy shit. Well, let's be honest here. There's a couple things that we need to discuss about Boomkins. First of all, Venthyr Boomkins, as they are right now, are not necessarily the favorites in terms of overall design. They're very good. They're probably the best uh, caster in the game. They're definitely the best caster in the raid right now with how their burst functions. But Venthyr Boomkins do get a big nerf. I would say a big nerf because Ravenous, uh, the, the Sinful Hysteria essentially extends Ravenous Frenzy by only one, uh, by 0.1 second instead of 0.2 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. And also the end extension is dropped down from five to three seconds as well. So you won't have as big of a window with the Ravenous Frenzy. Also, Boomkins have uh, received the tier set that kind of matches more with Night Fae and the Arcanic Pulsar in single target, which still gives it amazing burst. So I feel like it could be one of the best, best casters in the, in the raid, but probably not the best uh, of the best in the raid. So we'll have burst, you'll probably still want Boomkins for, you know, those mechanic deletion things. I don't think the burst of Boomkins are, is going anywhere. So and if you're playing Night Fae, Convoke might be back on the table. However, for AoE, it's kind of wonky. Boomkin is already kind of wonky in AoE where you kind of want to Starfire spam, or at least that's how it was in 9.0 where you Starfire spammed a lot. And you kind of still do it right now at the detriment of your Astro Power generation. And since the tier set just inflates your astral power generation to like crazy amounts that might become even more irrelevant in M+, unless the tier set is changed or addressed in some way. So in dungeons it might drop a tier overall considering how other specs are going to approach M+, with all the bonuses. So for me Boomkins are going to be down a notch and I think they're going to be maybe one of the best A tier specs. And that's mostly because in terms of single target, they'll still have maybe one of the best bursts in the game right now. And who knows, maybe you will even have some versatility and variety in terms of builds. You can either go Venthyr or Night Fae. I personally enjoy Convoke to no extent my boomkin is still Night Fae. Moving on to Demonology, right now the best Warlock spec in terms of raids and very high up there with dungeons as well. A little bit below Affliction to be honest. <clears throat> Demonology has an interesting tier set that kind of works really well for both single target and AoE right now. It's potentially the, the best bonus that Warlock has in terms of tier set for all the specs. However, it doesn't really... Demonology always has like a weird scaling right now. And even in patch 9.0 and 9.1, Demonology started out slow and eventually overcame uh, one, one or maybe both of the other of uh, Warlock specs at a specific point in time. It's weird because... There could be an issue, although this issue has been fixed with the over-generation of uh, uh, demonic cores. So it's it's we are kind of have to see exactly how it performs. I would actually put it safely into a B tier, although again, I can see it becoming an A tier, although not as much as, let's say, other specs. It, I, I'm, I'm, I'm open to, to be wrong, I'm open to be wrong. You know, demonology is my jam, it's my favorite warlock spec. But I guess we're gonna have to see how it all performs after a couple of months into the patch, because usually these predictions might be accurate for the beginning, but as the patch rolls on, you know, specs can come and overtake other specs as well. <sighs> Speaking of destruction, although I like demonology as a concept more, I feel like the, the tier set for destruction is the most interesting one, because now you can actually summon a, now it's called a blasphemy, it's just it's just basically a, a big purple infernal. So what, what uh, destruction tier set does is, after every 10 shards you consume, you fire a free chaos bolt or rain of fire, which is, I mean, it's kind of nice, right? Uh, 10, uh, 10 shards seems like it takes a little while, so I'm not particularly excited about this specific bonus, but the four set essentially makes it so that when you cast one of these free spells, you summon a Blasphemy, which is an empowered Infernal. I think it's for six or eight seconds, something like that, which behaves just like a normal Infernal. 
Um, <clears throat> I, I just, it's, it's, it's weird. It can be really good. I mean, the, the concept itself is fine. I like, I just love having infernals and potentially by the end of the tier, if you have a lot of haste, the destruction can rise above the rest, but I don't see it change much from its current position because right now destruction is the worst warlock spec in terms of performance is still very good don't get me wrong but it kind of is a notch behind everybody else both in raids and dungeons and the tier set bonus although it gives it bonus everybody else gets a bonus so i don't think that's going to be enough to prop it up against other specs but i would be surprised to see it and i would actually be happily surprised to see destruction rise from the goddamn d tier man <sighs> Elemental. Elemental is yet another very difficult class to judge. In raids, it might become uh, even better than it is right now, since most of this tier set bonus focus is around lava burst and how you are going to use all the lava surge procs to constantly fire lava burst and have elemental after elemental after elemental. There are still some issues that your crafters have uh, aptly pointed out that you will have uh, your fire or storm elemental a lot quicker and a bigger overall uptime on your elemental, which kind of conflicts with primal elementalist that only allows you to have one elemental up at a time, considering that earth elemental is a really good defensive cooldown, both with, you know, the fatal, uh, the accretion, the whatever conduit that gives you a lot of HP and the stun, which I guess it kind of only really works in, in M+, but it's still pretty good. And it's, it's, you might have to like constantly cancel elementals. We'll see. The problem with the elemental tier set is that in raids, it might be very, very good. But in dungeons, I mean, hardly in AoE, you will launch lava bursts, especially if you play storm elemental. You kind of not want to do that. But if you do, like, let's say, I think um, <clears throat> one of the theory crafters pointed out that if you have about three or four extra lava bursts shot during your storm elemental, you can extend it to cast another eye of the storm. So that might still be worth it. It depends exactly how it all scales. And it, of course, it depends exactly on the mythic plus affix, which obviously affects every other class. But this is what we're talking about right now. I think elemental right now can be a solid B tier. It might be like a B tier for M plus and an A tier for raid, but I'm not exactly sure. It feels like balance and affliction has have gotten maybe a bigger, a, a better bonus overall that affects everything else. But we'll have to see. I actually believe that Elemental might be one of the specs that will climb higher as the patch rolls out as opposed to dropping down in the list. And we're getting to Mage. Listen, Mage is probably one of my least played caster and yet still I have to respect the Mage. Respect the Mage. Fire has gotten maybe the best, so far, from, uh, from what people have been able to test, the best bonus in terms of tier set and in conjunction with the double legendary. Fire is seen to become really, really good. You might see the, uh, the comeback of Kindling playstyles as well, where you get quicker combustions. You have a lot of combustions that can work with the Sunking legendary. <clears throat> It's, it might even compete with Frost in AoE. I believe that Fire Mage might become, again, one of the best casters in raid, but all the way to S tier. And seeing that as, as it's, let's say, right now above the average in Mythic Plus, it's around A tierish in Mythic Plus now. I feel it will be even better in Mythic Plus next patch if Kindling comes back. You'll have, again, you know, the uncapped AoE, <clears throat> and it will do better single target than Frost, most likely. Although we can get to Frost in a second, I believe Fire Mage has a very strong potential to be an S tier. And that is weird saying that I've played Fire Mage the least out of, I think, all of the casters this patch. And yet still, I, I see it, man. I see the numbers. I see the potential. It's there. <sighs> Speaking of potential, Frost Mage um, is getting, um, let's say... Overall, in terms of numbers, as much as people have been able to test, the, the, the overall buff is not as big as Fire Mage, which is why we see Fire Mage rising up, but it's still pretty big, which puts Frost still in S tier. I think Fire Mage has the potential to become better than Frost, but Frost Mage has the Comet Storm uh, tier set bonus, which is really cool. And actually, after, you know, the, I think Preheat made the initial uh, first impressions of the Frost tier set, saying how Comet Storm is, uh, should not consume Winter Shield, but still benefit from it, which that has been fixed and is now part of the tier set. And that can actually open up more talents to be used on Frost. You can actually use Comet Storm as well. It might change the rotation a little bit. It might become an interesting spec, and that's always a positive to bring more people into the, into the playstyle and not, you know, kill the meme of Frost being, you know, a, a brain dead spec. Um, al although it does add the, you know, the unfortunate side effect of not have, of needing your target to not be moved. 
since, you know, the Comet Storms will crash down on the place that the buff was initially there. So if it constantly moves around, that might be a problem-ish. But I don't see this as a major issue because, you know, you could say the same thing about Frozen now with Frozen Orb in, uh, Frozen Orb in Dungeons, Frozen Nova. What the fuck is that? And people still manage to, to pull it off. So, you know, people get it. Tanks will get it. They won't move unless it's absolutely necessary. And if the boss has to be moved, likely Frost Mages can adapt to that as well. So I feel like Frost Mage is still a very strong contender. It might even have better single target in um, the Sepulcher of the first ones or the old ones, whatever the fuck. Uh, then it has now overall, so it could be an even better spec uh, overall. I still feel Fire could still be better than Frost. And moving on to Marksmanship, this is hard because the Marksmanship tier set is nuts. It might not be as good in single target as Beast Mastery, but it does have the cleave potential there. And it could even be better in dungeons than Beast Mastery. And we know that Marksman has been a very, very strong contender for the best caster or for the best range DPS rather, ever since 9.0, especially with the addition of Volley and the quick access to burst damage. It's actually a really good spec. I actually feel... Uh, Marksman is solid. It's going to be a solid spec. I'm not sure if it's going to rise in the ranks. It's currently kind of middle B tierish, so middle of the pack, which is not bad considering, you know, what everybody else is doing. It might have the potential to be higher, but I feel like overall Beast Mastery might take Marksman by the end of the patch. We'll see. Right now, I'm comfortable saying that Marksman is a solid B tier, as in it gets a lot of bonuses, but so do, does everybody else. So I don't think the bonuses that Marksman will get will overtake every other spec right now in the tier list. And... In closing, Shadow Priest. Dude, listen, uh, Shadow Priest is maybe one of the race specs that has been most addressed by developers by feed from the feedback that people have provided, which is, I mean, it's really nice to see. <clears throat> it does have really good single target. It's, I think it's likely to become even better in race than it is now. Um, AoE, it's kind of wonky because Shadow Priest is one of those specs that, from my personal opinion, it can do amazing in Mythic Plus keys or kind of underwhelming as well, right? So the skill gap kind of is very high with, uh, with Shadow when it comes to its performance, but I actually think that Shadow can become one of the best uh, range DPS spec, so I'm um, putting it all the way up to A tier. I'm not sure if I should put it in front or behind Affliction, but seeing as how Affliction kind of is a little bit better than Shadow right now in Mythic Plus, and it's probably going to be even better next season, I feel like it's going to overtake Shadow just by a little bit. But this is the tier set. This is the tier list with the tier sets in mind, of course, and the double legendary that we will have for 9.2 as a prediction. Again, once again, guys, because I know in the comments, you're going to let me know. I don't think that our spec is going to it's, it's disclaimer, right? Everything this is speculative by, you know, roughly judging the performance of the specs now and trying to add all of this on top of everything else. We still don't know the entire rate and how it's going to perform yet. We still don't know what the Mythic Plus affix is going to properly be in the next season. So this is just, you know, off the top of my head, let's say. <clears throat> now, I cannot really speak for everybody, but in when it comes to like average and a little bit above average, all of these specs are perfectly fine doing any raid boss and any uh, Mythic Plus dungeon. Only when you get to like, you know, plus 28s, 29s, 30s, and so on and so forth, you will see a big gap between specs, which is not normally what most people will experience anyway. So I feel like whatever DPS spec you want to play 9.2 is fine. I would think that maybe playing Boomkin or Mage or a Warlock spec, you're probably going to be safer than most, but we'll have to see. And of course, thank you, dear patrons, for supporting this video. This is kind of like a, a solo take on the TLF since Marcelin is recuperating, but he'll be back strong and in full force next week. I know for sure because he's been... Uh, He's been uh, messaging me. Yeah, I know, man. Shut up. All right. Listen, 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 listen. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you, dear patrons. If you want to support us even more, dear viewer, if you like this content and want to be a part of the team, you can check the link down below to our Patreon page. And uh, this is pretty much it. Have a lovely weekend, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Take care. I've been loving it then, I still love it now Still, I play wow, still, I play wow Getting better every day, let me show you how Cause still, I play wow, still, I play wow It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day It's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow Still, I play wow